Well, uh, let's take this uh, comment. I, I had my screen on something else, but uh, we have a comment uh, about exploding dice. And you said you were sure uh, for exploding dice. So let's take this because I was thinking about using an exploding dice mechanic. And we're talking about weapon damage as well, like a role playing game. And so the blue shadow says, I don't like exploding dice because it messes with the math and can make things with smaller dice better than things with large dice, which completely break the weapon balance. Do you have any input on that? Um, well, I mean, it doesn't mess with the, it messes with maybe your perception of what the math should be, but you know, I mean, I, it's, it depends on, you know, what you're looking for out of your game. I mean, and this goes to player psychology, right? Is, do you, some people want to be super, you know, they want to be analytical. They want to, um, you know, they don't want to, they want their plans to come to fruition. They get very frustrated if they like plan the perfect move and then they're thwarted by a very, you know, a small probability event, like a black swan kind of event. Um, sometimes, you know, depending on the players and the game, then that having that chance that, you know, a David can beat a Goliath can be very exciting. Um, actually in, in a new game that, um, is, is, uh, just going to coming out, hopefully, uh, is uh, that I designed, uh, co-designed with uh, Jack Thompson called, uh, Chung Ah, which is about the, um, voyages of the Chinese treasure fleet in the 1400s, um, in the Indian ocean. Um, so in that game, um, you, you take actions as the, as the captain of the fleet, as the admiral of the fleet. And it's a, it's a solo only, it's a solitaire game, but we didn't want it. Originally we had like challenge numbers and then you basically, you know, can roll a die to see whether or not you, you succeed in the action. Um, and we were concerned cause we really didn't want to have always be perfect, perfect plans always be possible. So, um, but we, we didn't want to have a wide variation necessarily in the results. So what we do is we actually have, um, a, a special die that's in it that has three zeros, uh, a, a plus one, a plus one with a star and a plus two with a star and the plus one with a star and plus two with a star are exploding. Um, and those add to the difficulty of the challenge. So once you decide how many resources, like your, if your target number is a five, you play cards equal to five or six or seven or eight or however much you want to do and commit to it. And then you roll the die or, or, or multiple dice sometimes to see how much you add to the challenge. Um, so most of the time it's going to be really close to the challenge level because three sides are zero, one side's just only plus one, but occasionally it can explode. But we very specifically wanted, because of the theme of sort of nautical exploration, and you don't know what's going on, you're, you know, you're, you're sailing into unknown waters, that there's never anything really such as, as a perfect plan. Um, but as a player, you've got to kind of, it's about judging the risk is what do I do? Do I, do I put extra in or, you know, do I just throw in one extra, two extra, three extra? How much of a buffer do I want to give myself? How much of a problem is it going to be? Whereas, I mean, the original design that we did, it was either just zero, one or two. That was it. So if you put in two above the challenge, you knew you were always going to be guaranteed to be successful. And we found that it really just drained a lot of the life out of the system. Um, because, you know, that uncertainty we felt was really important to have it become less of a mechanical exercise and feel more like an adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was the way that we used the exploding dice to kind of do that. Now the dice are only used on about a third of the challenges. Most of the challenges are fixed numbers, but about a third of them force you to roll this die. So we kind of sprinkle it in and spice it up. Um, but, um, uh, or you can try to do extra things that, that, but then you're taking on a die yourself. If you try to do a double action turn, you can roll a die to do that and things like that. Um, but in general, we found that from a player psychology standpoint, that that was working, uh, and that it brought the, the experience and, and the feel that we wanted. Um, there may be other experiences and, and, um, you know, and, and other types of effects that you're trying to get where it's not appropriate, where you want the players to know, okay, I've committed these resources. So I know that I'm going to succeed. Um, Robinson Crusoe, uh, if you're familiar with that game, um, uh, a cooperative game, you, you have two actions a turn and you can do two different actions or you can spend both of your actions on one activity. If you spend both on one activity, you're guaranteed success. Um, if you split up your stuff, then, you know, each one, there's a chance of failure. You have to roll dice then to see whether or not they succeed. So in that case, they wanted, you know, um, uh, Ignasi wanted to specifically give the players a, a certain path, but you can't do it every time because there's just, if you only do one action a turn, you're, you don't have enough time to accomplish the goal. 
So we kind of built in the fact that you have to, you're going to have to take risks, but you, you can have a little more control over the risks that you're taking. With what blue shadow is, is here thinking about, like when I was talking, when I was thinking about, well, what if I used exploding dice for weapon mm -hmm. damage? Yeah. And you know, you've got some, you got a dagger that does D four. Okay. And it explode on a, a four. And then you've got a great ax that rolls a D 12. The dagger is more likely to explode than the great ax. If you, if you're rolling the top number. So I had thought yeah. that, Oh, well, okay. If I'm going to do that, then I can't have D four to D 12 ranges with these dice. Like I need to make better use, more use of the smaller dice in combination, you know, have a, a D six and a D four for, you know, one particular weapon mm -hmm. to try to make all of those things more attractive to the players. Well, yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to have go all the way from D four to D 12 to D 12 or D 20, I mean, you could have a D four explode on a four and you could have a D 12 explode on a 10, 11 or 12. And then you well, that's true. That's another way to do it. it. They don't all have to explode <laughs> on the same number. Then you right. have to remember that. But that's a good point yeah. that you, know, you could you could adjust that by what numbers they explode on. Well, yeah. that's an interesting. You can also explode on the lower numbers, <laughs> explode on the one, two or three. That that can be interesting, too. You know, it doesn't have to be the highest number. You could explode on the lowest numbers. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different interesting things that you can you could play with if you're, if you're just doing straight damage. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and all of that jazz. It really helps a lot. But also, please check out The Cultists, the web series on this channel about modern-day D&D playing Lovecraftian cultists who just want to worship Cthulhu in a world full of people who just don't understand. Season 1 is on the channel now. But also, please check out my YouTube channel. I have over 150 videos on tabletop games and the fantasy genre. If you've enjoyed this video, you might enjoy many of them as well. I look forward to seeing you for them and many more videos to come.